Hey guys, welcome back to Praxis. We're beginning a new mini series today and I wanna look at the practice from the life of Jesus of fasting. Now, if you're anything like me, if this is the first time you've kind of thought about the practice of fasting, you probably might react like, ah, oh my gosh, no thanks. Like, I really love my food. And the idea of going without food for a period of time, and that, by the way, is what fasting is. Just for clarity, fasting is not eating. People talk about, um, you know, fasting from social media, fasting from TV, a Daniel fast where you just eat vegetables. They might all be helpful things that Jesus might use to draw us close to him, but none of them are what the Bible is referring to when it talks about fasting. Fasting is only ever one thing and one thing only, and that's not eating for a period of time. But if you're anything like me, the idea of not eating for a period of time feels unnecessary and abhorrent. Like I'm like, I love my food. The idea of not eating for a bit, just, I, I'm like, no thanks. I like, don't want to know. Let me just read some uh, verses of uh, scripture to you. These are uh, words of Jesus in Matthew 6, verse 16. He says, when you fast, do not look sombre as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what's done in secret will reward you. I just want to draw our attention to what Jesus says here. Jesus doesn't say, if you fast. He doesn't say, if you fancy fasting, here's some handy teaching and tips for what to do. He says, when you fast. It seems to be that Jesus is expecting that his followers will fast. I mean, that feels like news to me. Um, but Jesus seems to be expecting that his followers will fast. Now, it doesn't mean that we'll fast every day or every week or every month or even necessarily every year, but Jesus seems to think that this is a practice that should be present in the life of his followers. Small caveat, if you are someone who uh, struggles with an eating disorder or food in some ways a bit of an issue for you, I would probably say this maybe isn't a practice for you for now, or certainly I would say that you should talk to a doctor before giving this a bash. So just disclaimer that one at the outset. If that's you, make sure you speak to a doctor before kind of engaging with this kind of any further. But Jesus is saying when you fast, it seems to be that he's expecting this to be something we do. And I don't think that's because Jesus is like got some rules and one of the rules is like, you must fast, otherwise I'm going to be cross. I think it's just that in the practice of fasting, God uses it to bless us. You know, Jesus says at the end of this passage, your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Why is that? What does that mean? What, what I don't think it means is the longer you fast for, the more God rewards you because you've really earned it. That's not how this works. We're not trying to fast for the longest period of time to really prove to God that we love him and to really kind of like get his blessing to us. That's not what it's about. But I think what happens in and through the practice of fasting, and in scripture we always see the practice of fasting linked with the practice of prayer, it seems to be that the practice of fasting helps draw us deeper into the practice of prayer. There's something about not eating that draws us to the place of prayer in a way that eating doesn't. Um, it seems to be that in those places of hunger, you know, God uses it to kind of prompt us and draw us into prayer. In that time we've got freed in our days from preparing and eating food, God uses it to draw us into the place of prayer and therefore draw us deeper into him and into his love for us and to therefore experience the transformation that, that comes when Jesus is at work in our lives and therefore become more of the people he's made us to be. So of course we want to give this practice a go because we want to grow in Jesus. Now, there is absolutely no biblical kind of like requirement for 
thou must fast once a week, once a year, once a term, you know, none of that. This is, this is a gift given to us. We shouldn't feel bad if we're not doing it and we shouldn't feel good if we are. It's just a tool, a practice that can help us go deeper with Jesus. So I wonder if we might give it a go this week. It could be you just do it once and that's it. You know, it could be you do it once a month. It could be you decide to do it once a week. And if you're starting off in this, I would recommend strongly start small. It might be that you start by just simply not having breakfast. Or maybe you you don't have breakfast and you don't have lunch, but you kind of break fast um, with an evening meal. That, incidentally, is probably the practice of fasting that was around typically in Jesus' day. They'd have fasted twice a week. They wouldn't have had breakfast. They wouldn't have had lunch, but they would have had a light evening meal. Um, And quite possibly could be actually what he's talking about in the scripture we've got today. And so it doesn't need to be this heavy thing of, oh my gosh, I'm not going to eat for three weeks. And in fact, I would probably suggest that's not at very least where you start. Um, And nor do I think that that's where we feel we should need to get to, as if somehow like God's going to be really pleased if we've not eaten for a longer period of time. That's just not the heart of it. But I wonder if this week we might just maybe pick a day um, and just fast for some or all of the day and in those periods where we're not eating in those periods where we feel hungry just allow God in and through that to draw you deeper into prayer and therefore deeper into him and therefore deeper into the transformation that he wants to bring in your lives so let's give this a go this week and see how it goes more next week